So Sunset has been out for a few weeks now, and you guys still suck at it. Did you even know that this area of the map is actually incredibly important? Also, where the hell do you even plant on these sites? Well, don't worry. We have spent countless hours queuing Sunset so you don't have to. And by the end of this video, we'll teach you everything you need to know about dominating on Sunset so you can pick up free wins and start carrying in no time. And be sure to stay until the end of the video where we'll show you a very clear cheat sheet for how you can carry on Sunset no problem. Starting out, let's talk about A site. The spike site is super funky because basically it requires the attackers to surround it in order to take the site. And if you look at it, there's really nowhere for defenders to stand to defend it even if they wanted to. For this reason, defenders are expected to fight this nasty crossfire that they have control of at the start. Immediately from looking at this, you'll see how Sunset is generally going to favor a standard 2-1-2 setup for defenders with two players on A, one top mid, and two B, with one of the B players in market. More on that later though. For now, what you need to know about A is that you need to get someone posted up on this early angle if you can as a defender, otherwise it's going to be a tough hold. Once you get someone here though, you can easily have the other player rotate throughout the map freely. Since the map is actually pretty small, they'll be able to reposition towards mid in no time to help them out. A great tactic is going to be throwing recons through the windows in A main, in order to get your opper posted up similar to how you might do on A lobby of Haven. Also keep in mind, you can have a capable player get on top of these green boxes to hold A a bit more safely if you're looking for a safe off angle. If you guys lose control of A main, you'll notice how awkward this site gets to hold. You basically need to have two players watching both elbow and main in order to spot both locations, which can get very uncomfortable. So remember, to avoid this, try to get a player posted up on that A main angle. As for offense, as you might guess, it's their goal to force these A players back and push them into a more awkward position. You know how Viper players like to wall up into U-Haul on bind? Think of it kind of like that. Once a player's in U-Haul, it makes it really awkward for defenders to deal with. It's not exactly the safest thing for them to think to re-clear, but it's also really inconvenient for them to not know if you're there or not. At any moment, you could be coming out onto a site, which is a massive threat. And similarly, if you don't take elbow, it's going to be very difficult for you to survive a post plan on a site, since as we mentioned for defenders, there's not really anywhere to position on site. There's been sites like this before in Valorant that don't have a lot of great positions to stand. Think of it kind of like A-Site on Split. Normally when hitting A-Site Split, you want to take things like ramps or screens so you can have a more successful post plant. On A-Site Sunset, it's the same way. The most appealing areas you can fight for are Alley and A-Link. If you don't get why you need to fight yet, take a look at the best plant locations on A-Site for a second. The first plant is if your team is taking control of A-Link and maintaining A-Main. Notice how you can't see this plant from elbow. As intended though, it is planted pretty well for A-Link and A-Main, so if you have control of these areas, this is pretty decent. It's also safe from being spammed from alley, since your team isn't taking that area, so the planter shouldn't die during the site take. The other most open and convenient plant you're going to find functions really well if your team takes control of alley. This plant follows our rule of being planted against a wall and is easily spammable from elbow and alley, so your team can just fend the defenders off readily as they try to come in for the retake. Here are a few common plants you'll see players performing that are horrible and you should avoid at all costs. The problem with this one is it's comfortable. So many players do this especially in low elo, but it's the most comfortable because it's also the hardest to see, which as you could imagine can make a massive issue in post plant. The second most comfortable one is in the opposite corner, which also isn't great because really only the elbow players can spot it effectively. If you have the whole site, this is by far the best plant location. And don't worry, all of our plant locations and more will be listed in the cheat sheet at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for it. Finally, for smokes, when taking a site, it really depends on what you want to accomplish. If you're taking alley like we suggest though, these are going to be the most common smokes you'll see. However. Keep in mind, if your team's going mostly through elbow, you can also shoot for something like this instead. Or maybe you're fighting Link instead and want to give up control of alley. You can always do something like this. This is going to be a very complex controller map, and you'll need to adapt your smokes based off of what your team wants to take. So keep it in mind as you're placing them. Remember, a poorly placed smoke can cut off your team's entire ability to take space. So be smart with where you place them. 
For retake, it's pretty simple. Just smoke off the chokes. This map can get confusing by the way, and we get that. The chances are a lot of you have been getting really frustrated with the two new maps added this act. With so many ridiculous new angles for players to learn, it can be incredibly frustrating if you're a player who exclusively relies on strategy. That's why if you want to compete, you need to make sure your mechanics are up to snuff too. Our aim god course is the perfect solution for you to get your mechanics up to snuff. We cut out all the BS, and we teach you every fundamental you need to master to frag out like a Radiant in just under an hour. Chances are, your aim isn't actually that bad. You're just not following the right set of rules that the pros use to always land their shot while under pressure. We'll help you unlock your true potential and start climbing in no time, or your bunny back. That's right, we literally guarantee you'll rank up or you don't have to pay. More on that at the end of the video though. Alright, moving over towards B-side. B main's actually pretty difficult for defenders to fight due to the multiple angles that attackers can swing them from. In order to get a comfortable angle on B main, defenders need to actually push up pretty far and likely invest some form of info utility to have a duelist take the angle, which could prove to be pretty difficult. Defenders, however, should be able to walk over towards the billboard for cover if they wanted to take a fight on attackers coming in here. But this isn't really a location with a ton of room, so if their utility dumped in here, it could get pretty dicey. Based on this, you might conclude this site's easy for the offense to take. However, it's not exactly the case. Think of it as similar to B main on split. The attackers have an advantage generally in this location, but pushing into site is a different story. There are a ton of angles players are exposed to while pushing into B site. There's boxes on the left side you can sit on, there's this unclearable wall on the right that defenders can hide in and pick up kills from, angles from the left side of the pillar. Not to mention players flooding in for market all the time as well. There's even a window defenders can throw flashes through in market, and without taking back sight. Defenders can also flood in from spawn for free as well. So because of how difficult it's going to be to just hard execute onto this site, it's where you're going to see sentinels play most often. They'll anchor the site alone and buy time for their teammates for market and mid to come in and flood as you're executing, while their team locks down mid and A together. But if it's so difficult for attackers to take B, how in the world are they supposed to do it? Well, for starters, you're going to want to use some form of utility first to take B main. A drone of some sort, or a flash, it works just fine. Just because it's tough for defenders to fight for this territory, <laughs> doesn't mean it's free. Then, once you approach the site, you'll want to place smokes in these two spots. The first smoke is in market. You normally don't want a smoke to bleed out like this, but in this case, the threat of players walking out unpunished due to this corner is too high. So you'll need to place it deep in the corner so players can't get out for free. Then the spawn smoke is deceptive. You can't just place this smoke in the middle of the entrance like you might think. Yep, this looks fine on the surface, but when you look from the defender's perspective, they can peek over the top of this and easily punish your teammates pushing back sight. Instead, you want to place the center of the smoke more to the right, so that enemies can't see over the top of it nearly as easily, and it's going to allow your teammates to scale up back sight much more safely. In low elo, frequently what you're going to see is players being a bit more conservative with smokes. Doing something like this and not pressuring backside could easily result in your team losing a post plant. You won't have any locations to play. And not only that, but it's also going to be so much more difficult to get the spike down with these smokes. It's just a flat wall you can plan against, and players from both backside and market are going to have a clear area to spam you from easily, making it super dangerous to plant without either market or backside control. Instead, you're generally going to want your duelist to dash out towards the right side of site and then wrap the pillar, exactly how you would do it on a B side split. This is going to give your team the space they need to safely set up a post plant and secure the round. As you probably heard me mention a few times though, market is a massive threat when taking B. So how do we alleviate this? Well, this is where mid control comes in, which we'll talk about in the next section. Generally on B though, you're going to want to run some sort of split through mid. If you can occupy control of market, it'll not only greatly strengthen your post plant, but it's also going to make sure that you guys don't get completely screwed when entering site from a flood. Lastly though, let's talk about plant locations. One of the most open plants and safest ones is against the left wall towards backside. It's going to feel pretty natural to just plant against the pillar, but this will make it so if you have players anywhere else on the site, it'll be difficult for them to see it. Instead, a more open location that you might consider is directly across the pillar where players from market can see it as well. That being said, if this spot gets smoked off, it can be harder to spam from main, and if your team doesn't have market, it's still pretty dangerous. 
These are the two main plants you'll be using on B-side though. Finally, moving over towards mid. This location is incredibly important on sunset. Both teams are going to want to fight heavily for mid control, and if you lose it, your life becomes infinitely more difficult. From mid, defenders have very fast flanks on both A and B, so ignoring this area as an attacker, it can pose some real issues. Not to mention, the map's already pretty small, so being able to rotate through mid for either team can be an incredibly valuable asset. When it comes to spawn barriers, attackers have first advantage in tiles, while defenders have first advantage in mid, so you want to keep this in mind as you're fighting. Generally, if your team doesn't have first advantage in an area, you'll want to use some form of utility to take it. So for defenders, you're not going to want to just swing tiles, you probably want some sort of flash. And for attackers, you probably don't want to just swing mid, a smoke and recon could be incredibly valuable. An important thing to note for mid, of course, is the market door. Defenders may opt to shut this door at the start of the round if they're not looking to fight. It's up to the attackers to swing out and break it in this case. Otherwise, the defenders will be able to bunker up on sites without much pressure from mid at all. In some cases though, shutting this door actually could benefit the attackers. While the door's shut, attackers can keep all their gunfights in front of them in mid, allowing them to more safely take street control, which could pose a massive issue for defenders. For this reason, in many situations, it might be more favorable for defenders to actually leave the door open in order to fight mid to maintain more map control. If, however, you choose to shut the door, just know it's probably smart to fight for control elsewhere on the map, like A main. Finally though, let's talk about the best agents in each role on Sunset. For starters, what's your normal team comp going to look like? Well, in pro play, let's be honest, double controllers kind of taken over the meta, so you'll most often see something like Viper or Astra as a double controller duo. Harbor also will absolutely creep his way into the meta on this map as well, and can even function as a solo controller for a well-accustomed player. His wall is excellent at slicing up mid, and his cascade actually works pretty well for taking control of both A and B side. Even his cove can be super nice for securing a plant on those awkward spike sites. Overall though, if you're looking for a comfortable controller with tons of tools in her kit, you can't really go wrong with Astra. She's a great pick in the current meta on all maps and provides a ton of value on Sunset. Moving on to Duelists. Duelists right now are kind of in a funky spot. The only real ones seeing a ton of play are Raze and Jet. Both of these agents are just S tier in their own ways and will pretty much be dominant on every single map. They're both excellent at taking space, which on a map where mid and A control will be highly contested, having agents that are quick like this is super valuable. Not to mention, since Jet is fantastic with the operator, she'll always be a great option to get posted up somewhere and prioritize players elsewhere on the map. There's also a ton of excellent off angles for either of these agents due to their upward movement, so that's definitely an added bonus. And just to mention the other agents, Reyna, they're never really a must pick on any map. She's really more of a good if you're getting kills kind of agent and doesn't provide much value to the team otherwise. Phoenix can excel on maps sometimes, but the maps he's really good on are the ones that have readily available ultimate orbs. But the A and B orb can be pretty contested, so he's not really the best pick. Yoru is a great pocket pick right now, and as time goes on, players are starting to see more and more value in him, so we definitely recommend giving him a shot. His ultimate can provide excellent value if you're vocal, and his flashes are a great tool for taking space, so don't knock him out completely. Finally, in Neon's case, she could work in the right hands, but she doesn't bring as much to the table as Jet or Raze, so essentially you're just choosing a lesser version of them. Moving over to Initiators. Right now the best in slot is, of course, Sky, but you can also get a ton of value from both Sova and Fade when it comes to gathering info. These are the three best solo initiators in the game at the moment, and you're absolutely going to want one of these guys on your team. When it comes to secondary initiators, KO and Breach are great options, and can make it super easy to fight for control over the different areas the map provides, but generally don't work alone, since they aren't great at gathering information. In Gecko's case, he's not really a great pick on any map right now, at least in high elo, due to how easy his utility is to destroy. That being said, with the largely open roof, Dizzy can get a bit of value, so if he sees some buffs in the future, we could absolutely see him as a strong pick. Last, but certainly not least, Sentinels. At the time of writing this video, Chamber is going to be an excellent pick on Sunset just due to the lack of map knowledge players have. <laughs> There's already a billion angles that players aren't used to, so Chamber can get a ton of value there. But players are also bad at using utility right now since the map is so new, which is generally the main counter to his TP. 
but as the map develops and players get better, you'll likely see the most play from Killjoy and Cypher. There are plenty of great camera locations Cypher can get early info from at the start of rounds, and Killjoy's stall potential and lockdown, it's always going to be a massive threat regardless of what side of the map you're on. Since it's so common to fight for space on Sunset, Sage and Deadlock aren't going to be great. They lack the information capabilities from other Sentinels that we mentioned, but there is something to be said for how Sage can cheat maps early on. Rather than learning the angles and how to safely secure plants, you can just wall off sections of the map and forget about him with Sage, which is pretty phenomenal early on. Hey, you saw it on both Icebox and Split when Sage was super meta, but over time she got phased out as players started to learn how to play the map a little more. However, during its infancy, Sage is a pretty decent pick, and in low elo will likely always work. And yeah, basically that's how you play Sunset. We just threw a lot of stuff at you though, and many of you might be confused on what to actually take away from the video, so we wanted to wrap this up by giving you a sunset cheat sheet that you can use to win matches. On screen, you'll see our recommended team comp. If you're confused, don't worry. Just pick these agents, you can't go wrong. On offense, try to work your way up mid and force the defenders back in street if you can using smokes. If you're able to smoke off the left side of top mid, it'll cause the defenders to need to pull resources to deal with it, causing havoc in their defense. You can also try to work players into elbow on A, since once you get a player inserted there, it'll be difficult for defenders to deal with. Finally, for post plant, make sure to either fight for backside on B or mark it in either alley or A link on A. On the defender side, you'll want to set up in a 2-1-2 setup and get a player posted up on the A main choke point as soon as possible, similar to how you would do on A lobby of Haven. Once they're posted up, your extra player can rotate to help out across the map, and it's also great to fight for tiles and mid as a defender to deny attackers valuable rotation routes. And finally, plant in these locations A and these ones on B. And that's it! Let's tell you a little bit more about skill capped. So we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. <laughs> it's like a gym membership guaranteeing that you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered you that. Not us. We've offered this for years, because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the internet. We add new courses every month with over 1,000 guides curated into over 50 courses. No one else can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord, so you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game who will respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month, if you're serious about improving, that is. So that's going to be it for today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.